in doing research about um the creation of, of Batman, I, I noticed that that some of the stories that are in Batman and Bill and also Bill the Boy Wonder, they appear in in Batman and Me, the the Bob in autobiography. Um, things like the fact that Bob and Bill would frequent Poe Park, the story about Bill reshaping Bob's costume uh, to the one that we we know today. Um, it also has some stories that just defy belief. Like there's there's um, a story where he's like swinging from like a block and tackle, which is like, you know, a pulley <laughs> to like, you know, do flying kicks of like gang members when he's a youth. Right. right? There's the, the sort of infamous 1934 Birdman drawing. How do you go about separating that fact from fiction? And and to what degree did Bob's book inform who you interviewed and how you interviewed them and, and did research? That's a great question. So Bob Kane built a career by being deceptive or selectively omitting important information. So that does make him an un unreliable narrator. Because of that, when he mentioned Bill in the book, I took that very seriously because someone that that is so much about look at me you know look what i did look who i am look how great i am someone is who's that narcissistic when they break free of that and talk about someone else in a positive way to me that is it gives it more weight because this is not something that he typically did that said i prefer to have multiple sources for any fact that i cite and i I couldn't say for sure, but I think Bill himself talked about the original costume in the Starenko book, 1970 History of Comics. I think. Don't quote me on that. Mm, I, sure. It's a little rusty, but I, and it may if it's not there, it may be somewhere else as well, because I did prefer not to rely solely on Bob if I could avoid that. Yeah. But if it was something positive in Bill's favor, I, I tended to to give it some, you know, some weight because, you know, this was out of character for for Bob. But then you look at the grand, you know, the whole scope of things. And there's another interview with Bob, which I think was in the 1989 comics, ma comics interview magazine, the year that the Batman first Tim Burton film came out, mm. when he, he admits being hazy on the details. He said, I think I created Penguin or Riddler. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe Bill, like he was in print saying, I'm not really sure, which yeah. is natural when you're, <laughs> you know, 75 years old. So it, it was it was a little bit bit touch and go with some of this, but you know I did speak with a whole bunch of other people, some of whom we've mentioned already, and some of it's already in print. So you just have to distill. You know I sometimes would say how many times does how many times in the research does someone say that that penguin was, was created by Bill? How many times does someone say it was Bob or more? Would I, and I just have to like any writer, you have to just make an an, an, a, an educated guess based on what what you what you know. Well, even if it's very little. Sure. So the fact that Bob in his autobiography gives Bill credit very, very poignantly, I might add, was was for me was the, you know, was the the golden egg. It was just that sure. was it, I just felt like that was so significant. Um, now, he was likely. In fact, he was nudged. To, he, that didn't come from him alone. Tom Andre his the, the man who really wrote the book, who's now a a colleague and a friend. Without Tom, there would be no Bill in that book at all. So I always make a point to, to, to give Tom credit for, for nudging Bob. This is, you know, you, before this book, you know, Bob was the monolith of Batman. And here this guy saying, well, maybe you want to mention Bill in your own autobiography. Maybe that would be a good thing to do. That's That takes chutzpah to be the guy yeah. to do that, telling someone else how to tell his life story and give other people credit for stuff that he's been taking credit for. He did it. And Bob yeah. agreed. So, wow. yeah, and all that stuff informed what I was what I was willing to believe and what I was suspicious of. One of the things that impresses me about about the end product of your work in in the book, uh, it's it's got incredible focus and and clarity, knowing the truth <laughs> that Bob was kind of a selfish guy. Uh, it's hard for me to not be like angry about that. I, I think if I was in your shoes, it would be difficult for me to not just write like a takedown, <laughs> right? Like this, uh, just yeah. a, a story about how awful Bob was. And yet your book is is so measured, right? Um, it puts Bill at, I think, the rightful center of the story, it, it, you know, setting the record straight. Can you talk about your strategy and your approach and how you frame telling yeah. that story? Well, my goal was to build up Bill 
not to tear down Bob, but they're, I always get this mixed up. Is it mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? To build up Bill, you have to tear down Bob. You just don't have mm. to do it in a cruel way. But it's kind of like if you see two people and uh, one of them wants to get your attention, but instead you focus on the other person, you know, you're at a party and two people come up and they want to get time with you. And one person starts talking and you look to the other person and start talking to that person. You're showing what's important by what you're ignoring. Mm. So by focusing on Bill's role and ignoring and not, you know, having Bob in the book, except when I absolutely needed to, that was making a statement in and of itself. It wasn't calculated. It was just the way it was. But I, everything that I needed to say about Bill had, you know, was what overrode what Bob was doing at the mm. time. So That's it was not, analogy. it was, it, it, I'm, it's nice to hear people say it was measured. I'm glad that it seems that way, but it was really just a function of telling the story properly means that Bill does get that kind of real estate in the book. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you watch the film and you see Bob speak for himself, I mean, I don't need to expand on that. I think a lot of people that don't know anything about the story and see that instantly can feel what kind of person he was from that alone without knowing yeah. the whole history of Bill Finger's role. I mean, it's just he comes across a certain way. You know, it's writers like to let characters you know, speak for themselves in a, in a sense. And he was able, in the film, he does that. I don't know, the book is different, but in the film, he just, you know, I, I didn't have to say much critical of him at all because he just shows it on his, he wears it on his sleeve. Mm -hmm.